Welcome back to Plots Politics on Plots TV Africa to the second issue of the day. Reports of fears of a rise in kidnapping were famous after the successful release or call it rescue of the Kankara school boys. These emotions seem to now be validated as there has been a significant rise in incidences of abduction in the country since then. Could the fact that no death occurred either in the kidnapping or release of the boys have given more confidence to those engaging in criminal activity? Join, joining me this evening to answer this question and some other questions is uh, Dennis Amakri, former assistant director of the DSS. Good evening, Mr. Amakri. Good evening. Good evening for having me. Yeah, we thought uh, we are going to have less of kidnapping. We thought that uh, with the either superb performance of the military agents or, since it's still debatable, or, or the negotiation by the, you know, military Allah, that we will have less of these issues. But how do you describe it? Is it that uh, money exchange hands and therefore people felt this is lucrative? Uh, well, um, I don't know the exact details of this last one, but uh, looking at um, comparing it with uh, other ones that have taken place, like uh, the Chibo girls, uh, the, the first set that was released, uh, money was paid, and um, Dapchi, I think money was also paid, and I don't think it's very, very um, out of place if uh, money was paid in this one, uh, because uh, considering the, um, uh, should I say, the, the agitations by the parents and uh, the stress that was put on those people that are negotiated, I think uh, they must have given in. But I am definitely against paid of ransom because you continue paying ransom, and then it means you are, you are sponsoring terrorism. Because what do they do with the money you pay them? And uh, we also know that kidnapping is a means by terrorists to raise money, you know, to fuel their activities. So, you know, you find out some countries will say, we don't pay ransom. They will negotiate, but they don't pay ransom like uh, the United States, Israel, Israel had done it before, where they even negotiated out uh, the body of a dead soldier, hmm. you know, but no ransom was paid because as, as immediately you add money to it, then you are causing a real serious problem there. Wow. Uh, okay, let's even look at it this way. You know, it's almost, if it is not coming from a, a senior security personnel like you, we may have actually treated this as uh, a, a beer apologist. They will say, how sure are you? So most times we are never told that ransom was paid. But since you could tell us authoritatively, but let's look at so many revelations coming from a body like Khan, like uh, PFN, telling us that this trend is becoming disturbing, that they've been paying money from time to time when these clergymen are being kidnapped. So that also exposed to us that this has been a regular occurrence. So how do we really say it the way it is so that we can tackle the problem as it is? We understand that the reason why police is saying that is so that people don't feel, oh, the next thing to do is to rush and pay ransom. Uh, the situation is very, very bad in Nigeria. Bad in the sense that, yes, ransom is not supposed to be paid. And even when it is paid, it's a hush-hush thing. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a negotiation under the table. Uh, and sometimes it's done by third parties, you know, and uh, to get people out, uh, to save lives. But uh, when you start encouraging it, encouraging it in the sense that, uh, you know, kidnapping is a high yield, low risk venture, high yield, low risk venture. Hmm. And uh, being a, 
a low-risk venture, you don't even need a gun to kidnap somebody. You just have to threaten them and then, or bind them and take them away. So it's very, very easy. And of course, in Nigeria, we started experiencing this uh, in the United Delta. When the militants were um, fighting for their emancipation, and at that time, there was no ransom. The whole idea of kidnapping at that time was to make a statement. You know, they make the statement, kidnap somebody, keep him for some days, release him, and he goes out and becomes their PR man. You know, we've seen it a lot of times. Uh, but this one that, uh, you know, uh, ransom is being paid and the police is not doing anything about it. And that's why I'm saying that we're encouraging it. Because in the United States, they will even allow you to go and collect a ransom, but you will not be able to take it. It's not possible. Because they will track you down with that money. And of course, some of the monies are uh, printed uh, specially. And there are markers and all kinds of things that will happen to that money. And you will not be able to spend it. You know, so, but here, we are not doing anything about it. We're encouraging them. In fact, I know a situation where policemen were the ones that went to deliver the money. And then, of course, uh, uh, you know, the people just took their money and go away. Hmm. So you are not discouraging it. If you are discouraging it and making it dangerous hmm. for kidnappers to collect the money, then I think they will start thinking about another business to go into. Dennis, uh, call, call me a bloody civilian. I wouldn't mind, but uh, I'm speaking for some families of victims in the past. Uh, I'm speaking, reminding you of uh, some head workers who were held and were asked to pay some ransom and nothing was done on time and they were killed and the videos were shared. So how do you, you know, avoid paying ransom when I need my family member to be out of the abductor's net. Don't also forget the wife of the CBN governor. Uh, I'm talking of prominent people. I'm sure you know money exchange hands. They've been exchanging hands. That's why I'm telling you that Nigeria has become a kidnapper's haven, whereby they know if they kidnap, they will make money. During this uh, Christmas period now, even last week, what happened on the expressways in Kogi, uh, down at Ore, you know, Good State, you know, all these things are, you know, something that are happening very fast because there are no stops. There are no, there are no, there, are, there is no deterrence. There is nothing to tell the kidnappers that, look, what you are doing, you are not going to succeed. And that is where I want, I will advise the government to be, you know, um, families will always be worried. They will go and take, a, uh, they will negotiate. Uh, we should have a specialist negotiators in government who are going to negotiate their trade. This is a specialty where people who are trained and they can negotiate with kidnappers. And then as they negotiate this, they will come up with uh, solutions. We can negotiate to release uh, 10 Boko Haram people for uh, 100 of our school girls or something like that. But when you start giving the money, it becomes a problem. And that is what we are saying. This money issue, you know, should be stopped. Because when the families are losing somebody, uh, they will run around and then they will bring the money and they will pay. Uh, many people have paid, and uh, you know, to get their people back. But we want government involvement in this, where government will come out and say, "Okay, don't pay," and then we will be right there on their tail, because they know that nobody is going to pursue them. You know, that's why you see them. They go to their camp, they sit down there negotiating, and then later they will collect the money. You know, easily, easily. Collecting the money should be the hardest thing that the kidnapper should experience. Okay. But we're not doing that. 
So, so Mr. Dennis, you said something here, and I wish uh, it is not true. I wish that uh, uh, you would have a way of being diplomatic about it, but you were so unequivocal about it that kidnapping is so easy to do that you may not even need a weapon. And that sends a whole lot of fears in my spine. So how do we you know, prevent this? What are the busiest things that we need to do as a country to prevent this? We're talking about children. We're talking about clergymen. We're talking about, you know, harmless Nigerians who are just victims yeah. every now and then. Kayode, you know, you know me. I've talked with you many, many times. And uh, I'm a security professional, and I'm not trying to be politically correct about anything. Because this particular situation is security. If we don't give it the, the necessary uh, weight and uh, the, the attention that it deserves, you know, then we are just wasting our time. We are not going to come here and start to play games about a very, very important national security threat, you know? So I'll tell you one thing. It is true, and this is very, very true. Kidnapping is a low intensity, or should I say a low risk, low risk, low risk venture, but high yield. Because you kidnap somebody, and then of course, um, uh, you negotiate and get uh, billions. Uh, we even have in Nigeria here, we have a, a millionaire uh, kidnapper in dollars, who mm. have kidnapped people and collected dollars. Mm. And now these people, you are asking, how do we stop it? These kind of people, when they are arrested, are not even jailed. Evans, the kidnapper, he is still there, living large in Krikri prison, living very large. He does not eat prison food. He does not, you know, these are things you can, generally should go and check this out because we cannot continue paying lip service to this, you know, and then, you cannot allow these kind of things to continue because hmm. when it continues, with the kind of unemployment and you know graduates who have finished, whose minds have been open, you know who are thinking very fast, who are very savvy in uh, comp computer literacy, you know, without jobs, what do you expect them to do? They will sit down there and start strategizing, and when they strategize and, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, what, what is happening right now, they are dealing with human beings, they are dealing with individuals. After the individuals, they will go for institutions. Then our banks are not going to be safe. Hmm. You know, because when they start hitting banks or, you know, other financial institutions, it becomes a real problem for us. Okay. So yeah. we are not going to take it easy. Okay, uh, apart from uh, the punitive measure where you want uh, kidnappers to be well dealt with, what other basic things we need to also do? Maybe some bit of security tips for everyone to take note of if our security apparatus is so, you know, so loosed. Okay, one thing is this. There are two basic forms of kidnapping. Two basic forms. One is the opportunistic kidnapping. Opportunistic kidnapping, anybody can be victim because they are not looking for any particular person. Uh, people are traveling on the road. Kidnappers come out from uh, the bush and they saw a car, they stop the car, and they pack everybody into the bush. All the people, they are opportunistic. They are opportunistic victims. Hmm. But the other one, targeted kidnapping, is the one that I'm very worried about. And that is the one that we are going to look at. Targeted in the sense that you either targeted an individual or you are targeting a school children in bulk, you know. And when they do that, targeted kidnapping happens only when a lot of work has been put into it. Hmm. Believe it or not, but kidnappers have an organizational structure. The first one is the surveillance guys. Those are the ones that will be following people that they think have money. And that's why we are telling people, don't exhibit your money. Uh, we are too flamboyant in Nigeria. You know, so you are flamboyant, you are driving a very 
uh, expensive car, and then, of course, there are people who have not eaten for days, and they are looking at you. They start following you. They want to know where you live. Wherever you go, you will end up in your house. So they will come. They know when you leave your house. They know when you arrive your house. And they know where you stop. They know where you walk. They know you're the school, the children, children's school, and all those kind of things. So you as an individual, what are you going to do? You are going to start countering those things. Keep a low profile. You know, despise your roots. Don't follow the same roots all the time. Make sure that, uh, you know, you are not exhibiting a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 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 riches all over the place. Yes. And at the same time, when you are driving, always open your eyes. Because some people, even when they are walking, they have uh, ear plugs they are blocking their ears and moving on the street. They don't even know what is happening around them. They don't hear what is the sounds around them, the sights and sounds. They don't know who is following them. Hmm. Because you are driving your car from uh, Victoria Island uh, to Surulere, and of course you don't know that a car has been following you since you left that your office. So oh. when you are driving, you look front and back sideways, because um, sometimes they are following you, they will, they will drive up to you, level up with you, and check inside your car and see how many people are there. You, if you are very much awake, you should be knowing this. That is surveillance. Kidnap surveillance is going on. Okay. Uh, and then uh, when this continues to go on, you have to use evasive action. That is, if you are driving and you see them. But if you are, if you are not, then you will be caught. And if you are caught, then there are other things you need to do also. Don't argue with them when they catch you. Obey whatever they tell you. Eat the food they will give you because it will keep it, but not be the food you like, but it will keep you alive. Hmm. Okay? And then, of course, don't negotiate for your release. Never. Allow people outside to negotiate. And then when they catch you, they will tell you, don't get the police involved. Please, if you are kidnapped, tell your family members to go and report to the police or the DSS immediately. They have departments that are put up to handle things like this. That, so is, that, is, when you, things. that is when you are allowed to communicate. <laughs> uh, well, the point is that when they communicate, they will tell your family or something. They usually okay. call your family. Uh -huh. And they will tell her that uh, we have your plan okay. and uh, you are going to pay 100 billion or something. Quite a very you know, serious don't issue. Involve the police. Uh -huh. uh, don't negotiate with them. Get the professionals to do the negotiation and then, of course, uh, allow them to handle it. Okay. Uh, Dennis Amakri, I wish we had more time, but I'm not trying to trivialize this discussion. Maybe on a final note, you touched part of it, maybe in 30 seconds, if you could tell us when you are kidnapped, any move to try to escape and uh, why should this be discouraged like you just did now? If you have yeah, the green try light. To try not, yeah, try not to escape. In fact, look at the situation. There are people that have escaped, you know, but look at the situation. If it is not 100% clear for you, to escape, don't do it. Because okay. if you do it, they'll kill you. Uh -huh. So don't. But if you have a chance, if that window, like sometimes they get drunk and they decide they are sleeping, and then of course you are you are weak, and if you are not bound together, and then you find out that um, you can escape, then you run for your life. But okay. you know, it's not very advisable to do that. It's dangerous. Thank you so much, Dennis Amakri, former assistant director of the Directorate of Special Service, oh, of uh, State Services. Thank State you for Service. thank you for your time. Thank you very much. You remember the okay, controversy thanks. of DSS and SSS, so we're not going to that tonight. <laughs> thank you That's so no much. That's not controversy, it's the same thing. <laughs> I, I know, I, you know we've had this argument before. Thank you for your time once again. Thank you.
And uh, this is how we call it a wrap on today's edition of Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, same station. Stay safe, do all the necessary protocols, wash your hands, have, I mean, practice physical distancing, and make sure that you stay safe. Coronavirus is still here, and we must do our best to stay safe. And this is where we say bye for now. I am Coyote Ladeide.